Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and in this video I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about the John Deere S100, so let's get started. So first let's talk about model numbers. We'll start here at the front with the S. Now this will be new to 2021 as before in 2020 and years prior, these were gonna be letters such as E and D. But now in 2021, they've moved to the S and that along with that change has come some significant changes throughout the whole 100 series lineup. Now as we move over next here, we have the 100. This is gonna be our model indicator as within the 100 series, you have a range of models going all the way from the S100 up to the S180. So we'll talk about those differences and we'll start here by jumping underneath the hood. Before we get underneath the hood, one thing I wanna point out is just how easy it is to raise and lower this hood. One thing that you'll notice is there's no latches or clips or anything that's holding this hood down so it makes it very easy to get underneath and access. But one thing that I would say about this is, is that if you go and buy this mower and someone's gonna load you out or you're loading this up, maybe you're putting it in the bed of your pickup or on a trailer, we want to make sure and pull this mower forward that way whenever we're going down the road the wind is hitting this hood and keeping it held down because if we back this onto that trailer or put it into the back of our pickup you do have the chance of the wind catching this hood and bringing it up so just make sure and keep that in mind whenever you're going out and going to buy one of these mowers now next here underneath the hood first thing we point out is we do have a 17 and a half horse single cylinder engine now one thing that we always notice here is that they are branded john deere but keep in mind that these are manufactured by Briggs and Stratton. So if you are looking into this mower and a single cylinder is maybe something that you're not so sure about, you can jump up to the S120 to get into that V-twin or two-cylinder engine. And then if the Briggs and Stratton is a deal breaker for you, you can jump all the way to the S240 to get into that first line of Kawasaki engine. So now let's talk a little bit about service points on this engine. Now we'll start here on the top. Since this is a single cylinder engine, our air filter is over here to the side. And we have two twist locks here. We're just going to turn those down into the unlock position, pull this top off, and we've just got a single element air filter here. Very easy to remove, very simple to put back on, and when we go back on with our top, we just need to make sure that our twist locks are in the unlock position, make sure they're dropped down into place, and we turn those to lock them back in and that locks our cover in. Now, since this is a single cylinder engine, we are only going to have the one spark plug here. So just know that that is where this is located. Next, we'll talk about our oil fill and our dipstick. So right here on top, very easy to see. We do have the oil symbol there. So when we're going to check this oil, we pull this dipstick out, wipe it off, go back in. Now, this is one thing that a lot of people get confused about on how to check the oil. A lot of people think that when we go to check this, we need to go ahead and tighten this all the way back down, but that's actually incorrect. So what we wanna do is set the cap on top, turn it until it drops into place. I'll do that one more time. Just turn it until it drops into place and that now we can pull this back out, check our level, wipe it off, and then we can tighten down once we're at the right spot. Now, just keep in mind, this is also where we're going to go back in with our new oil when we're doing an oil change. Next down here below, we're going to have our oil drain. One thing that's really nice about this, guys, is that it is off to the side here where we can get an oil pan down below. We're not gonna have that spillage all over our frame. It is gonna be off to the side. And then also, this is going to be a toolless open. Now, Theoretically, we should be able to twist this by hand. As I can see, you just turn that by hand there, and you can take this plug out. But if you do have trouble with that, a simple set of pliers to be able to pull that off very easy to open that up. So next over here on the left hand side, first thing guys, since we're talking about oil, is we have our oil filter right here on the side. As you'll notice, no covering surrounding that. So very easy to get to, easy to take that off, change it, put our new one on. And then also here on the left hand side, we have our fuel filter right back here behind that's held on simply by these two clips. Once again, very open and easy to get to. So last service point here will be our battery. This is a very important one as we all know we have to have power to these machines to be able to run them now one thing that you'll notice is we do have a strap over the top here to help hold this in it's simply strapped in down here at the bottom where we can loosen that off take our battery out and change it also if we wanted to take this battery loose 
and put one of a mount on trickle charger you'd have the room to do that or just your standard trickle charger as you'll notice all this space here above a very nice open design here and easy to service at the engine so lastly here since we're talking about service points one thing to keep in mind is that you do have a service interval chart right here on the mower underneath the hood where you can always reference this that way you know when it's time to change those things such as your engine oil or your air filter your spark plugs you have those things right here on board with you now let's talk a little bit about the operator station and before I hop on we'll talk a little bit about the seat first thing guys this is going to be the 11 inch back seat now this will be the lowest back seat in the 100 series as this is going to be the smallest mower in that 100 series but one thing to keep in mind is, is that if this is an issue for you you can move up in mower size or you can also just swap out the seat as they're gonna have the same mounting brackets here so if you need the upgrade in that higher back seat you will have that option now one thing I would say about this seat that's nice guys is it does have a lot of cushion to it and it's also made with that weather resistant material that's not going to absorb moisture and then it's also still going to have the flip up feature here to where if you do have that moisture build up and it's going to have the ridges in the seat here that's going to allow that moisture to fall out of the seat so still a good option it's just going to be that low back so keep that in mind I'll go ahead and hop on the mower here we'll talk about all of our controls starting over here on the left hand side first thing we're going to have is going to be our deck raise and lower now this is going to be a very easy spring assisted system that goes from four inches down to one inches in quarter inch increments now what i said very easy to do i'll just show you that with that spring assist changing heights is going to be super easy here like i said it has that spring underneath that's going to give you that assistance when raising that so very easy to change those the other nice thing about this system here being on the side is if you needed to change on the go you get from one patch that we want to mow at a certain height and maybe the other we want to leave a little taller or a little shorter very easy to do right here on the go as we don't have a pedal system now next thing moving forward here we're going to have our brake system now this is not only going to act as a normal brake like it would on your vehicle to stop the mower but it's also going to be where we set our parking brake so once we push all the way in we raise up here on our lever you'll see that the pedal stays in place and that's going to put this mower into park and then to relieve that we'll push in and down on our lever here and then now we'll be unlocked from park and ready to drive next let's talk about our throttle lever here one thing that is nice about this throttle system is that it is a one lever system on a lot of different series of mowers you're going to have a separate lever on the side here for choke but as you can see on this model our choke position is just going to be all the way forward and then once we let off the spring system pulls it back down into the normal throttle position so you don't have to use both hands when trying to start this mower next moving down we're going to have our rio button which is our rear implement option button so what this is is this is a safety feature on these mowers that we have to press this button whenever we're mowing before we can go in reverse so what this does guys is this creates a safety feature to where we don't happen to back up or run over anything with those blades engaged before that way we're conscious that we're doing it because we're having to push this button first so if we have those blades engaged and we start to go in reverse what it's going to do is completely start to shut down this mower until you let off of that reverse pedal so you will not have to reset this if you do that. Those blades will stay engaged once you let off of that reverse pedal. But if we don't push this before we start going in reverse, then it will kill the mower. Now, once we've pushed this and we get going in reverse with those blades on, you can let off of that button, but you do have to push this to start that rear descent. Now, since we're talking here a little bit about engaging blades, what we have here is we do have a manual PTO engagement. What this is, guys, is this lever is going to have a cable that goes all the way down to the bottom of the deck that's going to pull that tensioner pulley tight make that belt tight so it can start to turn those blades so to engage the blades will be in the up position and to disengage will be over here on the side all right so now let's go ahead and show you how that choke and the blade engagement works here now to start these mowers we're either going to need our foot on the brake or have our parking brake engaged then we'll go all the way up here into the choke position as you saw there once it started up and I let off of the lever it went back down into the throttle position and then from here I can change my throttle either to high or all the way down to the idle position now when we're going to engage these blades we don't want to be all the way down in the idle position and we don't want to be revved all the way to the top 
we want to be somewhere kind of right here in the middle so we can take it easy on that clutch so now to engage those blades i'm just going to simply take my lever here raise it up and right there you see the blades engage now to show you that driving function here if i take my brake off and i start to go in reverse here as you hear that it starts to kill the mower but if i push the button and then start my rear descent. Now the blades will stay engaged. And then I can go back forward here. And then we can simply just stop the mower, turn the blades off. That way you get a good sense of how this RIO button works and how the choke works. Now here we'll talk about our hour meter. So here on the display right here in front, we do have the hour meter that will have the service reminders. Now one of the big upgrades to the 100 series into 2021 was the addition of an electronic fuel gauge on the hour meter. But the 100, the S100 being the lowest model in this class did not receive that upgrade. So you will still have the manual gauge here right underneath so you can still see it here from the seat it's going to be right underneath where you can see your fuel level but if the electronic fuel gauge is something that you really want for your mower we're going to have to look to the s110 or higher for that feature so over here on the right hand side we do have our key switch now what you'll notice is we have a stop position a lights position a run position and our start position so now if we want to use our headlights what we'll have to do first is go ahead and start the mower then the key he will kick back here to the run position and then we'll go one click back to turn those headlights on so you do have that headlight option where if you need to do those early morning cuts or those late night cuts you can toggle those back and forth to either turn those on or off now one thing to keep in mind is is that we do need to make sure that we are going all the way into the off position or if you know we're showing off these lights to our buddies or whatever we need to make sure that we're not leaving this in that lights position as that will drain our battery now next one really cool thing about these mowers and it says it right here on the dash where you can always see this is that these are made in Greenville Tennessee USA so we get a lot of comments uh, a lot of customers are concerned about where these mowers are built you know whether they're built overseas or in different countries and things like that but what you'll notice here is they are very proud to say that these are built right here in the United States now next thing moving over this is going to be a very big upgrade to the 100 probably the biggest upgrade to this machine to the prior models in 2020. Now in 2020, this was a CVT transmission and it only had one pedal here at the foot and then you had a controller here on the side to pick either forward or reverse. But now in 2021, they've changed that. They've gone to the TLT Tough Torque transmission, which is a true hydrostat where you will have your forward and reverse pedal here. Now also over here on the right hand side, since we were talking about the seat, one thing that you will have is you will have seat slide. So you're gonna have five and a half inches of slide or we can slide this forward or backward. That way you have that adjustability to fit those different operators. So if you're shorter or maybe your kids are gonna be using this mower, you will be able to slide that seat forward. Or if you're a larger operator and need more room, you can slide that back. Next, we're gonna have our storage container here. Now, one thing on the 100 that you'll notice that you will not have a lid to this storage container. But as you can see here, you are gonna have the notches. So if you do wanna add this cover, so you're able to put your wallet, phone, keys, whatever those things are and be able to cover those up you can add that but it will not come standard on this s100 and then also one thing that a lot of dealers or a lot of places will do is put your spare or extra key here in the container here that way you know that you have it and if you don't see it there in your storage container make sure to check in your operator manual and make sure that before you leave with that mower you do have that spare key now lastly over here we will have a cup holder so you can have on board whatever beverage you want with you just a nice feature to add to that comfort as we know we're going to be on these mowers for a while so you can have that water or whatever those things are with you at the rear here now first thing like we talked about we do have the flip up seat one thing also to keep in mind with the seat is that you are going to have this wire going up this is going to be a seat switch that's going to require an operator to be in the seat to operate this mower so just make sure that this is always attached as this is a big safety feature. Now, as we move back, you'll see here that we do have our spring suspension for the seat. And then also 
we're going to have these black circles here, which are our cargo mount system that are going to be used for attachments. Now, guys, I've got tons of videos out there on these different attachments. So if that's something that you are looking into for this mower, just know that these are going to be where a lot of those attach. And we're also going to have spots here up front to where we're going to be able to attach such, thing, such things as our weather enclosure or maybe those sun canopies. All those different things are going to be here with that cargo mount system. And like I said, if you're looking into those attachments, guys, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check some of those out. Now, next, guys, right here underneath the seat is going to be our fuel tank. So we have a tethered lid here that is going to be attached. That way you don't lose it. This is going to be a 2.4 gallon tank. And one of the nice things about the way this is configured is that you do have this nice wide opening. That way, if you have that spillage, we're not going to be getting it all over our mower. It is going to run out and down the bottom there. Down below, a couple of things I like to point out. First off is going to be these holes right here in the frame here of the mower. Now, these are going to correspond with our cargo mount system when we're going on and mounting such things as maybe those rear sprayers or our bagging system or bucket holder we are going to be utilizing these notches along with our cargo system so just make sure and know that those are there next is going to be our transaxle release rod so as we can see here on our stickers when we're pushed all the way in like we are now we're ready to drive this mower and then if we pull this rod out as we can see here, now we're able to push this mower and what that's doing is just releasing those transaxles. That way those are able to be pushed and moved. So once we release our parking brake and pull this lever out, you can easily push this mower. Now the question often arrives is, got, why am I going to have to be pushing this mower? But you may have those things to where maybe we run out of fuel or have mechanical issues, whatever those are, this is just a system to help you out. That way you can get this mower moved from wherever it's that. Next here guys, we are going to have our hitch system. As you can see, this is just a simple hitch into the frame. So what this is going to be good for is any of those pull type attachments, whether it be for fertilizer spreaders, rear pulled sprayers, whatever those things are that have that clevis style hitch that will go over right there and we can pin through and pull those different rear rear attachments now like we talked about having the upgrade to the transmission right here you can see that we now have this cast aluminum tlt 200 tough torque transmission now before what these were were more of a plastic housing transmission that went along with that cvt like we talked about before having to change from forward and reverse on the side and having the one pedal but they have upgraded this 100 to where now it is a true hydrostat which is a huge improvement to the s100 now here at the deck what we have is going to be a 13 gauge 42 inch edge cutting system now keep in mind that on the s100 the 42 inch deck edge deck is going to be the only option for this model of mower now within the 100 series you can get 48 and 54 inch decks but we're going to have to look for a 48 up to the s140 and then for a 54 up to the s180 so just keep in mind that the 42 is the only option on this S100. So first guys, here we have our anti-scalping wheels. Now these are gonna be your protection against scalping the yard with the, having these wheels. Now keep in mind that these are going to be adjustable. You're going to have four positions here that you can change the height of this wheel. Just keep in mind that the, the lower you're gonna be cutting, the higher you want these wheels. The higher up you're gonna be cutting, the lower you want these wheels to make sure that you're protecting your yard from that scalp. Now next, moving back, we have a washout port here. Now this is what we're gonna use to clean the underside of our deck as we know that throughout the season we have that buildup and that gunk and everything that gets built up underneath. So to clean that out, we're able to hook up a water hose here, take this deck, get it on a concrete or asphalt surface, set that all the way down to the ground, turn that water on and then turn our mower and our blades on and allow that water to churn and clean underneath the deck. Now, one nice thing about these decks is they are going to be a 13 gauge stamped steel. So as you'll notice, there's not going to be any welded corners. This is gonna be stamped out of a single sheet. And one great thing about this guys is that really adds to the airflow of this deck. It adds to the ability for this deck to process material, to get it in and get it moved out. And also without having those welded edges, you're going to eliminate spots for that buildup to, to collect. And also whenever we have that collection of that buildup, we're going to get stuck, we're going to get such things as rust 
and other damage. So that is a nice feature here to these John Deere decks. Now the next thing on this edge deck is going to be the spindle covers here. As you'll notice, they are bolt on. Now this is for a certain purpose as we want to make sure that these are staying on at all times because these not only act as a cover to the spindles, but you'll notice these notches here on the sides of this cover. And what this cover is going to do is actually be a belt guide, keeping that belt into the pulley to make sure that that deck is functioning properly. Remember that we have that manual engagement there so that belt is going to be loose whenever we don't have those blades engaged and it gets tight once we engage it so to help keep that belt into the pulleys we do have the guides here in the covers now another nice thing about these covers is we do have an opening here on the sides that are going to allow us to get to those grease those grease circs underneath and it is very important that we're making sure and greasing these spindles making sure to keep that moisture purged from out of those spindles making sure that we're not having that damage within so another very important thing on these decks is making sure that they are level at all times so to do that we're going to have hangers on both sides that look just like this where we can adjust our nut here clockwise to raise it counterclockwise to lower it and making sure that we're level across both sides is going to be huge when Whenever we're adding to that cut quality now we also need to be making sure that we're paying attention to the levelness forward and backward as we always want our deck to be forward just a little bit in the for lower just a little bit in the front to make sure we're getting the right cut quality so to adjust that we're going to have this bolt system right here at the front same thing guys it's going to be clockwise to raise it and counterclockwise to lower it i've got tons of videos out there too of how to do the different services on the decks whether it's taking them off changing the blades leveling them and then also videos on how to service the engine now what you'll probably see is going to be on e-series mowers but just know that those will translate to the s-series so if you're out there looking at the different ways to do these different services whether it be on your deck or on your engine make sure to go and check those out guys as we have tried to make a full library that way you are equipped to be able to do these services on your own over on the right hand side of the deck guys is going to be our discharge side so as you see we do have this flip up chute here that is going to be spring loaded now on the 42 inch deck this will be a two bladed deck and once we move up to a 48 or a 54 then we're going to move to the three blade system once again we we will have an anti-scalping wheel just make sure that when we're adjusting those we're adjusting them on both sides and then we'll also have our other spindle cover here once again this will be a bolt on that we need to make sure that we're keeping that on to keep that belt into place and we'll have that same opening and making sure that we are greasing that as well now while we're over here on the right side one thing that i like to talk about is just the ease of changing our tires and wheels now as we know that with these mowers we're going to have those times where we have flats and the nice thing about the 100 series is to change out a tire and to take off a wheel it's just as easy as pulling off this cap or leaving a spring pin and then pulling off that wheel going and having that tire repaired and then being able to slide that back on put your spring clip back in and you're ready to go. So another nice feature to the 100 series is that we are going to have this cast iron axle. Now this is something that on the smaller residential mowers we don't generally see, but John Deere knows that with the mowers here we take the brunt of our force at the front so they have made sure to go on with this cast iron axle now we talked about the two grease points that we have on the deck we're also going to have three here on our axle we need to take care of one on each wheel and one here in the middle so we need to be making sure that we're taking care of all three of these grease points to make sure to add to the life and longevity of this mower. Now let's talk dimensions as these are gonna be super important for whenever we're talking about where we're going to be storing this mower and how we're going to be able to get into those areas we need to get into, whether it be gates or storage buildings, whatever those things are. So to start out guys, we are going to be 70 inches total in length. We're going to be 40 inches tall at our highest point here at the steering wheel. And now width, this is where it gets confusing is a lot of people think that if we have a 42 inch deck, our width is going to be 42 inches. But you have to keep in mind that you also have the width of that chute. So the width 
with the chute, you're gonna be at 55 inches. Now, if we raise that chute up, we're gonna be at 46 and a half. So since that chute doesn't come all the way up, you're still gonna have some of that length. So you need to know that your narrowest point, whether you're trying to get into those gates or shops or whatever those places may be, the narrowest that you can get this mower is gonna be 46 and a half inches. So I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, we just ask that you please hit that like button and give us a subscribe as that helps us out as well. Also, we are going to be the best place online for you to buy your John Deere parts. So make sure to check out that link in the description below where you can go to get those and if you're having any trouble finding those parts make sure to call us at the number they're listed in that link in the description below so we can get you helped out as we have a service team that's ready to help you with any of those needs and as always guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time so the whole 100 series lineup was now here we have the s100 in okay yeah i know got to someone's got to keep you in check don't forget who runs this show. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's talk about the right side of this mower. Hold on, we got dueling forklifts going on. You want that beep beep vroom vroom in there? Vroom vroom vroom. Look at these. Look at these guys. They work for a living. They do. I do too. Who? <laughs> you got that on camera! Nice drop, Jimmy! Hey, boy! Nobody saw that! Hey guys, make sure you check out this cool video and this one and this one up here. And down here, you can buy your John Deere parts and subscribe right here.